looking for relaxation and amusement at the end of a working day, go to Piccadilly and it's all there waiting for you. Theatres with every kind of show from highbrow drama to musical comedy and variety. Cinemas giving you a super colossal production for a few shillings. And after the show, if you're in the mood that tells you that the night is still young, London offers you the choice of seven times the number of top flight nightclubs you'll find in Paris. Mind you, it isn't cheap, but nobody except a millionaire playboy takes in nightclubs as a steady diet. They're for special. Special occasions when life is extra good. When you hit the jackpot and the normal day is too short for that kind of celebration. This is the exciting beginning to a wonderful night out. Exciting for boyfriend and girlfriend. For couples just engaged. Or even for young Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Especially exciting for young Mr. and Mrs. Smith if each had thought the other was spending the evening with mother. White box, a warm gift from the Arctic, the most cuddlesome of furs. This lovely fur, as white as a snowball, as soft as a snowflake, the envy of all. Ranch mink fashioned with an oriental slant, but eastern or western, the ladies adore it. Such riches, such splendor, the beauty it lends her, a fur that makes madam supreme. Mink will make madam, oh, dream. Leopard, captured from the jungle, fashioned to the lithe lines of the feminine form. This savage fur, tamed for her pleasure, as smooth as her shoulders, the jungle's treasure. And finally, sapphire mink, the cosliest of them all, a fur for the favored few. The finest, the rarest, it's meant for the fairest, rare mink for London's elite. Sapphire makes Madam complete. Thousands of pounds worth of fashionable furs wrapped round a million pounds worth of gorgeous girls. But for a variety of reasons, a constant supply of new gorgeous girls is required. So let's join Percival Murray behind the scenes at the Cabaret Club and find out where they come from. Fine, it's packed out there. Have you got the list, David, that uh, these girls? Yes, that's the list of girls about to go on holiday. That's the list of contract options which are shortly expiring. And that is the list of applicants for a London audition. Well, there are not a great many there, are there? Obviously, we'll take up some of these options. I think the best thing is, you know, we'd better take a, another Manchester audition. Yes, I think so. I'll ring up Rick in late on. Would you put me on to Mr. Froud, please? Ricky, we're getting very short of these gills again. The best thing is to lay on a Manchester audition. So would you get on to Dixon's and ask them to put in the usual advertisements in the local paper? Why Manchester? Well, nobody quite knows why. But it's a fact that about 60% of all the girls you'll see on the floor of the cabaret club were formerly just one of a crowd like this in some town or city in the north of England. Girls from shops, girls from factories, girls from offices. As a matter of fact, for years, the gorgeous girls in nearly every well-known team have come mainly from the north. But oddly enough, nobody else ever seems to have had the bright idea of holding regular auditions anywhere else but in London. What are the qualifications required? Well, it's a help if they can dance a bit. But as long as they've got a sense of rhythm, dancing can be taught. Three things, however, they must have to start with. A pretty face, a good figure, and an attractive personality. These are the faces that make a company director 
forget how bored he is in the boardroom. The committee of experts has the job of picking out from hundreds of girls the one or two who have that extra something. Now and again, of course, they make the wrong guess. Sometimes even the prettiest girl doesn't click and she goes back to the obscurity of the job she gave up for the bright lights. But sometimes they pick so well that the girl they chose for the chorus goes right on to stardom. This is Sylvia, stage manager and dance coach. It's her job to take the raw material of the girl who knows little or nothing about dancing and produce in no more than six weeks something that is good enough to show to the customers. Sylvia's own background includes Sadler's Wells, so she knows that it's only by hard work that you can hope to achieve perfection. The dancing day for a girl in training starts at 10 o'clock in the morning. And even after the initial period of six weeks, there's never a day that goes by without rehearsal. Practice, and still more practice. So this is show business. Glamour and the bright lights by way of hard work. One, two, one, two. You think you've got nice legs? So has Gordon Pirry. But can you keep going as long as he can? One, two, one, two. If you think a pair of pretty legs is a passport to fame, it's easier to stand on the end of Blackpool Pier waiting for a breeze. Mm-hmm, looks promising. Yes, you'd promise her anything. But for the chosen few, being chosen is only the start, the start of a period of grooming, the first of a million things that turn a rough stone into a shining diamond. Well, first of all, let me congratulate you girls for having got over the first hurdle. But the first hurdle is, I think, the smallest one. Because I don't know whether any of you have any illusions about show business, whether you think it's going to be glamorous, lots of fun, and easy. Let me tell you, if you've got that idea, now is the time not to come. Where do we stay in London, Mr. Murray? You stay at a large hotel right in the heart of Piccadilly, which is only a minute from the club. How many shows a night are there? There are two shows a night, one at ten, and the second one's at one o'clock. For how long do we train, Mr. Murray? Well, you have a maximum of six weeks. If you're competent before, you may well go in the show before. On the question of training, there's a great deal more than just steps and deportment. You are taken right through a charm school. It is full of discipline and hard work. Right, girls. One, two, three, four. Back in London, the girls discover what they meant when they talked about hard work.
dance for a while. Thank you. Having decided that our gorgeous girls have the makings of dancers, we now discuss possibilities with Laurel Gray, who is responsible for producing every show that goes on the floor. Even for the hardest working girls, relaxation is a part of life, but producers only relax when life is extinct. Incidentally, once these girls are signed on, they don't have the usual show business worry about unemployment. It's a job for every week of the year, and holidays with pay. Let's go along now to the office and look in on a production conference. A number that lasts only eight minutes on the floor of the club takes as much as six months to devise and produce. As well as being responsible for production, Laurel Gray works out the dance routines and writes the lyrics. Then there's the musical side. Harry Lawrence is the band leader, and he also does the orchestrations. His job is to make a small band sound like a big one without driving everybody crazy. Each production costs about 30,000 pounds, and that means that each number costs about 10,000. And that's a figure that would make the average theatrical producer take away the number he first thought of. In that fur number you saw at the beginning, the furs alone were valued at over 7,000. A lot of the money in every show goes on dressing it. The costumes are based on designs by Michael Bronze. First of all, he's got to produce costumes that attract the eye of the customer. But at the same time, he mustn't design so much costume that the customer feels frustrated. Another difficulty the designer is up against is the question of what goes where and how. Many of the costumes are scanty. They represent the irreducible minimum. So it's absolutely vital that what goes on, stays on. And that's not so easy. You can't have a lot of straps and hooks and elastic. In fact, you can't have a lot of anything. It's a case of the little more and how too much it is. The more you see of this side of show business, the more interested you become. If you're fascinated by facts and figures, we'll give you some more facts. A big production number requires as many as 35 girls on the floor at once. And they've all got to be dressed in some kind of exotic and splendid costume. That's why the Cabaret Club employs no fewer than seven dressmakers on its permanent staff. Not only for dressmaking, but for repairs also. One particular costume required three hours work on it every day, just for repairs to the sequins on its train. That was normal wear and tear, not because anyone played rough. In addition to the permanent staff of seven, extra staff is taken on from time to time to lend a hand for special occasions. There's the music to be composed. And this again is a specialized job. It has to be gay, without being so gay that the customers want to join in the number. the lyrics is another job done by Laurel Gray. But though they sound so slick on the night, they only get like that as the result of very hard thinking. The next headache, and this one is particularly for the producer, is planning the movement of the show. The problem is roughly the same as the problem of the orchestration, how to get a lot into a little. The whole atmosphere of the intimate show would be lost on a big floor. Besides which, the more room you give to your floor show, the less room you have for supper tables. Here the trick is to work out the dance routines so that 35 girls can perform intricate steps at high speed without looking like terrified sardines fighting to get out of the tin. 35 dancing girls manoeuvring in a floor space of a few square yards is another good reason why producer Laurel likes girls with narrow hips. And why teacher Sylvia's job is to keep the movement as precise as a guardsman trooping the colour. We're moving out now into the country, far from Piccadilly and the busy traffic's roar where the bursting of a gala night balloon is replaced by the bursting of buds into blossom. 
It's a world that couldn't be more different from the world of nightclubs, where the nightingale is about the only serious performer who bothers to put on his act after daylight has departed. But this particular spot is one country place that has a very strong connection with Clubland. It's the home of Percival Murray, and it's a place where a lot of important work is done in preparation for his shows. It's a part of the job in show business that the girls usually look upon as rather a dreary chore. But for the girls of this club, it's a day in the country too, and they love it. Here it is that all the costumes are made. And here it is that the girls come for fitting. Usually it's one fitting for each dress. And here you can see more of that problem of the dress designer. How to make the little that goes on, stay on. Life would be a lot easier for the dress designer if the girls would let him use drawing pins. Every stitch sewn into every one of these dresses is put there by hand. And that's one of the main reasons why the dressmaking staff is so large. Even for a dress with a million sequins, there's no automation. And as soon as a costume begins to look the least bit the worse for wear, off it comes. To be replaced by a new one, of course. At a nightclub floor show, the girls perform very close to the audience. And the first thing that starts a top-grade nightclub on the slippery downhill slope is a floor show that looks a bit tatty. It means the boss is slipping. And the customers will forgive anything slipping except the boss. After their turn in the fitting room, the girls relax, dreaming of the day when Prince Charming will come along and make them the lady of some such stately home of England. Princess Charming and a life of luxury, showing people round the West Wing at a half a crown a time. Even if life isn't quite as good as that yet, they're still well looked after. They have a contract, welfare and a matron on the staff. Paid hotel accommodation for the first trial period plus a subsidised visit to a first-class hairdresser twice every week. Now back to the West End and the last meticulous preparations before the new show goes on. David Murray is checking that the complicated lighting plot is ready to be carried out. And lighting is another one of those things that only works smoothly as the result of hours of hard planning and applied skill. Sixty percent of all the customers at the club are visitors from overseas and travellers from abroad are an important asset in every part of Britain. But the overseas visitor won't come back if the light on the face of the prettiest girl in the show reminds him of what his old woman looked like coming through the Bay of Biscay. Backstage in the dressing room. And if they've got an attack of first night nerves, they're not going to let anyone see it. It costs at least 200 pounds to get each girl, who was a raw recruit at that audition in Manchester, ready for this moment. And the girls who have got as far as this have proved that they are able to stay the course. Incidentally, as another sidelight on this side of show business, there's an average of one new girl in the show every week. Every week of the year, one girl hangs up her hat for the last time and clocks out. Mostly they get married. Others go on the stage. Just occasionally they retire from old age, at the ripe old age of 24. But just at the moment, no one has thoughts for anything but the show that is just about to go on, the polished achievement that represents all the hours and weeks of solid work behind the making of a little piece of light entertainment that is now so easy on the eye. These are the final moments for the finishing touches before going out into the spotlight to find out if the paying customers think you're as good as you hope you are. There's the call, and they're on, with what the programme describes as an exotic presentation based on the Mambo.
Stand by with the lights and let it go. Caribbean voodoo. Oh. 